So in this problem, we want to show that the direct delta potential is actually just a limiting case of the uh, infi of the finite square well. So recall that for the finite square well, we have a setup that looks something like this. We go from negative a to positive a, and then we have this well which has a depth of v naught. And then for the direct delta potential, we have this infinitely sharp spike that looks something like this. So don't forget that for the direct delta potential the potential looks something like this. And then if you integrate this component over here, you'll see that the area that you get is actually equal to alpha. So by definition, this is going to be equal to alpha. So that means this area is going to be equal to alpha. So if we're going to treat the direct delta potential as a limiting case of the finite square well, we're going to let a tends towards zero. And then while this, uh, while this finite square well gets more and more narrow, uh, we're going to let v not become larger and larger, so it's going to be even uh, more and more deep. So while this gets narrower, the well is going to get deeper. And then it is going to get deeper in a way such that this whole area is going to be restricted to be equal to alpha. And so when a tends towards zero, and when we, we maintain this area to be equal to alpha, when a does tend towards zero, essentially what you're going to get is the direct delta potential. So this is the requirement we're going to impose upon the finite square well. We're going to let a tends towards zero, and then we're going to let this area stay uh, maintained at the value of alpha. So that means this length, which is 2a, multiplied by the height, which is equal to v0, must always be equal to alpha. So that means v0 is equal to alpha divided by 2a. So these are the two restrictions we're going to impose upon the finite square well. So by imposing these two restrictions, we're going to arrive at the direct delta potential. And then you see that for the results that we obtained for the finite square well, we would be able to reproduce the energy level allowed for the direct delta potential. So let's try to, so let's try to derive the energy level of the direct delta potential uh, based on these two restrictions over here. So recall that the energy level of the finite square well is given by this equation. So if you solve this equation, if you solve for the value of z, you will be able to find the energy level that would uh, the energy levels that would be allowed for the finite square well. So one thing you should note that uh, you see this constant z naught over here. So recall that this is defined as being equal to a divided by h bar times two mv naught. And then I'm going to put a a square root of a inside the inside the square root. So we get two mv naught times a. So we know that v0 is equal to alpha divided by 2a. So I'm just going to replace this v0 with alpha divided by 2a, and then multiplied by a. So you see how these a's, they cancel out, this 2, they cancel out. So in the end, you get m alpha a divided by h bar. So you see that z0 is going to become uh, a, it's, it's going to be equal to a term that is dependent on a. And then you can see that as a tends towards 0, z0 is also going to tend towards 0. So what that means is that the solutions to this equation over here, the z itself is also going to tend towards a very small number. So uh, recall that if you want to solve this equation, you need to graph this. And then the tangent z graph is going to look something like this. And then this term over here is going to come down from above and then intersect the graph at z0. So you can imagine if z0 tends towards 0, you're going to bring this point further and further back, and then it's going to intersect at the point that is also going to be very close to zero. So that means the value of z, which satisfies this equation, is also going to be very, very small. So that means this equation that, we, that we're dealing with over here, so recall that this is the equation that would give us the allowed energy levels. We can actually take the tangent z, and then we can just express it as z, because we can, we can ignore the high order terms, because when a, a tends towards zero, z is also going to tend towards zero. So all the high order, we can ignore all the higher order terms. And then so we get z is equal to this term over here. So I might as well just square both sides. So z squared is equal to z naught divided by z squared minus one. So z to the power of four is equal to z naught square minus z squared. So this is one important result that we have obtained so far. And uh, one other result we can obtain is that we can focus on this z naught square minus z square, and then we're going to rearrange this term a bit. So z naught, recall, is equal to a divided by h bar times 2mv naught square, 
and then we call that z is equal to a l squared, where l is equal to 2m v naught plus e divided by h bar. And so if you square on both sides, you get a squared h bar squared 2m v naught, and then here you get a squared and l squared is equal to 2m v naught plus e divided by h bar squared. And so you see that these two terms, they, they cancel out, so in the end you get negative 2me divided by h bar squared times a squared. And then this term over here, don't forget, this is actually just equal to k squared. So you get z naught squared minus z squared is equal to k squared a squared. So this is a very important result that, that is going to be useful later on. So you see that this term over here is equal to k squared a squared. And so that implies that z to the power of 4 is equal to k squared a squared which implies that z squared is equal to k a. So this is another important result that we're going to use later on. So one thing you should also note is that recall that we arrived at this expression. So z to the power of 4 is equal to z naught squared minus z squared. And then once again, because when a tends towards 0, uh, z is also going to tend towards a very small number. So that's why this high order term is going to be insignificant. So we can say that when a tends towards 0, the value of z, z squared, is going to tend towards z naught squared. And so that means z is equal to z naught when a tends towards zero. So this is another important result that is going to be useful. So now let's try to combine some of these results. So we know that so we know that z is equal to z naught, and then we also know that z squared is equal to ka. So we also know that z squared is equal to ka. So that means z naught squared is equal to ka when a tends towards 0. So this is actually the expression that we're after. So we can actually now manipulate this to reobtain the uh, the energy level of the uh, direct delta potential. So recall that z naught is equal to this expression and then for the restrictions that we have imposed upon the finite square well, z naught also takes on this form. So square root of m alpha a so square root of m alpha a divided by h bar. So this is the alternative form of z naught. And then right now we're dealing with this case over here, z naught square being equal to k square. So z naught square is going to be equal to k a. And then k, don't forget, it's equal to the square root of negative 2 m e divided by h bar uh, times a. And so uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to, so let's try to square this first, so h bar square. And then let's try to square both sides again. So of course we can take away the a, we can take away one of these h bars. So now let's try to square both sides. So we get m squared alpha squared divided by h bar squared. And on the left and right hand side we have negative 2me. And then dividing this over to the other side, we get the energy level e is equal to m alpha divided by 2 h bar squared. And also there's a negative sign, so don't forget about that. And then that's it. So this should be also a square for the alpha. And so there we have it. This is actually the energy level that we obtained for the direct delta potential. So you see that by imposing these two restrictions upon the finite square well, the potential will become the direct delta potential. And then under these two restrictions, you can see that we have been successful in reproducing the energy level that is allowed for the bound state for the direct delta potential. So everything makes sense.